Julia Hagen and I'm coming from Salzburg. I was raised and born in a musical family, so I always listened to music. My two older siblings already played an instrument and I remember I was laying on a blanket and I also wanted to participate. I didn't want to just lay there, I also wanted to join them in, in making music. Another reason why I wanted to learn the cello is I always, when we played hide and seek, I hit in the cello case of my dad. And of course, no one found me there, so I really loved the cello. That's why I started to play the cello and I, thank God, never stopped. For me, it was never difficult as a child to have a cellist as a dad, because yeah, for me, he was just my father, not a, a cellist. I mean, of course, I heard him practice, he was on tour, but at home, he was there for us. He was, he was just a normal dad. It actually just began later that I kind of realized people know who he is. People ask me like, how is it to have a cellist as a dad? And I always said, well, it's normal, I just know it like that. There was one moment when I wanted to stop playing the cello. I think I was 11 years old. I was at my teacher for six years and I kind of got a bit bored. So I told my parents I want to stop playing the cello and they said, sure, you can, you can stop, no problem, but you have to tell your teacher yourself. And I just couldn't do it. <laughs> um, they were yeah, pretty clever. That's why I just continued. Then I changed my teacher. My new teacher was Enrico Bonzi. And since I entered his class, I was absolutely sure that's what I want to do because he was so passionate about the instrument. Since that moment, it was clear I want to do cello for my rest of my life. I wanted to study in Kronberg because, first of all, I knew many students who did their studies here and I admired all of them. I felt like they were all amazing musicians. And then I heard that you also have lessons with non-cellists, which for me is just simply amazing. Now it's so interesting to also hear some different perspectives about music from a non-cellist. That was actually my main reason why I wanted to, to come to Kronberg. I had many different routines and really weird ones. <laughs> for example, I had a time where I thought I have to eat a banana with cinnamon. I don't know why. I remember there was one concert in Vienna, which was super important for me. It was uh, at Vienna Concert Hall in the big hall. And it was recorded with cameras and I was so nervous. And I had the banana, but I forgot the cinnamon. And you know, sometimes you have those feelings, you have to eat it like you always do. Otherwise you can't be relaxed and, and perform. And my brother was so sweet, he ran to the supermarket and brought me the cinnamon so I could eat my banana with cinnamon. Um, I stopped doing that, it's way too complicated. I started to do yoga, which really helps me a lot during the day, not just right before the concert, but to be more relaxed and to relieve some stress. The next skill I want to learn is speaking Italian. I will start to teach there, so I thought it's good if I will be able to speak some sentences in Italian. I'm super curious to start that. I always heard from many musicians that as a teacher you also learn very much for your own, actually. What is music? I love there's a quote from Victor Hugo. It says basically that music expresses what you cannot say but there's the need to say it anyways and i love that quote because i feel that's exactly what i feel when i play the music because i'm really bad at expressing myself in words and in music anyone can understand what we want to say and i think that's so special about music and no matter what kind of music it's not just classical music it can be anything it can be jazz pop r&b any kind of music, everyone feels connected to it and everyone understands it and that's what I love about music. Mm -hmm.